If you believe it or not, INFJs so often wait for people to acknowledge us before we give ourselves the permission to be ourselves. Very often we think we don't do this, but I used to do this all the time. And I do believe that a lot of INFJs still struggle with this. So if you feel like, okay, I'm actually not there yet. I still feel like there's something missing. I promise you, if you look into this, you'll make big jumps. If you really allow the thought of, is it possible that I'm waiting for somebody to acknowledge who I am, to appreciate it before I start appreciating myself? Because when we wait on this, it's not going to happen. If you think like something is missing, I promise you the things we're going to talk to you about today will let you see things differently in a way that makes sense to you. And when you say, yeah, I should actually lean into this because the thing we have to do, and this is really a matter of integrity. This is really a matter of deciding who you want to be in this lifetime. And it's something that on the one hand, maybe the most difficult thing you will ever do, um, the most difficult decision, but it will be also the one that will get you out of any victimhood that will make you be aware of how much power you actually have to change the world around you, to make it more the way you see it. And again, like what is the bad thing about it? If you have an image of how great the world could be and how peaceful it could be and that you can help get it there because nobody of us is doing this on their own. Every one of us is contributing. And so once we decide to take on that responsibility, a lot of things will change. And I'm going to aim to explain this as simple as I possibly can. So you can pick this up and really embrace it into who you are becoming. And hopefully it will help you just as much as it really helped me. Before we get started, one last reminder, Bootham has launched, so you can join until tomorrow, November 2nd. That's when we're going to have our first live call. So uh, yeah, you still have time, 24 hours. If you watch this while this is coming out, join us. We're going to have a lot of fun, create the life we always wanted and uh, change the world. Click the link in the description and join us now. You know, when you enter a room and you hold on to an image of who you're going to be in that moment, we very often do this when we're in situations where we feel uncomfortable, when we're not so open towards other people, for example, and we go in thinking, I'm going to be strong. I'm going to hold on to who I am and I'm really going to observe. And this kind of holding on is really something that we keep with us in a way of, okay, when can I let this go? Like when can I be around somebody and just completely let all of it go? But the point here is you can do this in a way that's authentic or you can do it in a way that's unauthentic. And if you do this in an authentic way, this is something that I believe is never ever meant to completely be removed. Because the way I see it is we have, you know, masculine and feminine energy. We have like this equilibrium that we have to be and we have to create a boundary around who we are. We have to have energy that is, you know, brought in and we also have a boundary of what we allow in. And there's a part of us that I always like to say is not up for debate. This is a part of me that I have really held on to and made it very clear as possibly as I can to myself first and foremost that I will not let go of. And I have not let go of that version of me for the last, what is it, like 10 years? How long do I do this channel? It, like at that moment. So it is something that is possible because once you hold on to this and you know this is not a matter of, oh, at some point I will let this go. This does not mean you can't connect with people. This does not mean that you can't be authentic. What it means though is that you are defining who you are. Yes, you can connect with others. Yes, you can co-create. Yes, you can, you know, have exchange of energy, but you are this energy. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with saying, I have to protect this energy. Because in order for this energy to be able to influence others in a positive way, to inspire others, to get you to where you want, you have to hold on to this. And in bootcamp, for example, we talk about how to anchor this in through relationships. Like if you, for example, talk to your father and all your life, your father has treated you like you're some 
you know, person who doesn't really have a lot of value in their eyes and all of that. And you just said, well, when I'm around him, I'm going to allow this energy because it's just easier. It's going to be uncomfortable. And I just spent less time with him. You're actually giving away responsibility because the point here is to say, like, even when I'm around my father who, you know, has never seen me in this way, because starting when I was small, he might've had an image of me and you know, that's, you know, nobody's fault. We all know people suffer and they have their own pain and all of that. There's no judgment there, but we get conditioned to this. And we've so often have like some underlying dynamic that we always go back to that we accept no matter who we around. And sometimes it's a different one. That's why, you know, when we're with one person, we're this one version of ourselves. When we're with another person, we're a different version of ourselves. And we sort of like, you know, maybe don't even want those people to meet because then they will see a part of us uh, that is being revealed because we're friends with another person. That's how it was for me, at least for a long time. Now it's not this way because there is a part of me that I always show up as. And this is something that I'm not holding on until I find somebody who allows me to let it go. I'm the one who's holding on to this for the rest of my life because I will protect my inner peace. And I know, like this is something that I know for sure has to stay there. You're not betraying yourself by saying that this is who I am and I'm going to protect me because through that, People will start seeing you. You will be able to move the world. You will be able to influence people in a very subtle way without ever having to change who you are. And you're actually setting the cornerstone of finally being seen, finally being understood, finally feeling like you belong. And we will talk about belonging in the next video coming up on Sunday. But I really encourage you, if you think about holding on to an image of yourself, of how you see yourself, that this part has to be something that is not up for debate. That doesn't mean that you have to be the exact same version, like all the way around when you're with, you know, different people. Yes, I'm going to talk with one of my friends more about like the career side of things and with another friend more about music. Like that's okay. Like I don't need to talk to, you know, my friends about what I'm doing here. That doesn't mean that, you know, I'm not being authentic, but the core of me, there's a part that, you know, nobody, will have access to, and that's a good thing. You're not closing yourself off from love. You're actually allowing people to get to know the real you, and you are starting to love yourself first. So that's why I'm always saying, if you have in the back of your mind, oh, I have to hold on to some image, and then one day a person is going to see me and I can let go of that, that's not the right approach, or even better. You know who that person is going to be, who's going to, you know, take that burden off of you, your higher self. Because there has to be a part of you that says, no matter what, I have to do this. And I'm going to do this because I'm doing this out of integrity. I'm doing this because I've worked through things and I know that this is the only way forward. There's a lot of interpretations I have on things and, you know, they get fine-tuned and I understand things more deeply with time. This thing, I'm not changing my opinion on it. This thing I know for sure. And I encourage every one of you to have this as like a go-to thing that from now on, you're going to practice to be in your energy as much as possible and stay in that, even if it gets uncomfortable. Because only through that, you can teach yourself to become resilient to that. You can then decide, okay, what kind of energy do I wanna confront myself with? So for me, in the beginning, that meant I needed to retreat. When I show up like this, I cannot show up around 100 people. Maybe I'm going to be around five people, right? And through that, with time, I will attract people who like this real version of me so I can actually expand a little bit more. And then I can open my horizon, you know, connect with people and also, you know, have energetic exchanges. But the core, that stays me. So now let's talk about three practical things that you can do. So the first thing is to really become aware of your values. What are some non-negotiables? I really like to work with archetypes, but you can also make it very logical. So one of my core values is I'm going to act in integrity. I'm not going to manipulate people. I'm not going to be nice to people so they need me. And if I, for example, feel like a person is manipulating me because they're suffering and maybe they're not even doing it on a conscious level, I'm not going to enable them because I know at the bottom of my core is that they don't need that. They're a perfect human the way they are. Yes, they need to work through things and all of that. But if I mirror back to them, poor you, you're suffering so much, 
I'm not acting in integrity with my core values. There is a time and place for comfort and there's a time and place for you to really be that version that says, I know you can do better. I know you can be better. This is not something that I'm going to acknowledge. This is not something I'm going to mirror back to you. And this is, for example, one of those core values that I've taken with me. And it has really helped me so much because then I don't look at, oh, what's the immediate effect here? I'm looking at, okay, I believe all people can really rise higher and be more in alignment with themselves and, you know, make all the world and all of it better. So I can't, you know, like, do this just because it's going to make me feel good this moment, just because it's going to create connection for me. Yes, I want connection. I crave connection, but this isn't my biggest core value. My biggest core value is I'm going to act in integrity. And if I feel like you're not acting in a way that makes me feel good, in a way that makes me maybe feel obligated to help and all of that, I'm not engaging in that. That is not the nice thing to do in that moment. That's not what's going to create connection for me in that moment. It will create more meaningful connection in the long run, but it all happens because I choose my core values over everything. And so I really encourage you write down three things that are real core values of you that you know from now on you're going to hold on to no matter what. You're not going to change how you view a situation. You're not going to pretend you're weaker than you actually are. See, that is not the same thing as like letting your energy out or not. Like you can be as powerful as you are, you know, removing yourself from a situation. Uh, I talked in the last video in a way of, okay, let your energy out deliberately. You're not pretending to be weaker than you are. You're just not giving people access to it. That's a whole different story. So, you know, the other thing I really do is work with archetypes. Again, this is something we do in boot camp in our, I think, fourth or fifth um, week. It really makes a lot of shifts happen. So that's the first thing. The second thing, and I already touched up on this, is to stop people pleasing. So if you feel like you need to be nice to somebody to create harmony, think again. It has to be something that we're not doing anymore. If it's not in another person's best interest, we're not doing it. People pleasing is leaning us into giving up our core values. We can help people, we can encourage them, but if our core values are, you can do this. And this is also a belief we have to have in other people. We have to set the standard of what we believe is possible. Because if people choose to tap into that potential, that's not for us to decide. Every person has free will. You don't have to live a happy life. You don't have to choose to tap into intuition. There are other ways to find your passion and your truth and your calling in life and you know whatever makes you happy. But this is who we are. We're intuition. We have a certain way of seeing the world. And from our perspective and our biggest gift is that we don't need to people please. We know that there's love. We know that that person is accepted. If we lean into people pleasing and we give up who we are, we're mirroring back to them that it's okay to give up on yourself. But if you show up as who you are, you're actually doing that person the biggest favor because you're saying, listen, no matter what, I'm going to choose me. And that in itself should tell you that you can do this too. I'm giving you the space to make that transformation happen for you, no matter how uncomfortable it may feel, how imperfect, like I'm giving you space and I'm giving you subconsciously permission and I'm inviting you to do this because yes, you don't need my permission, but if I just do it and they see that they're not the only ones, you know, they're way more likely to take that step because nowadays, you know, it's still not the most common thing to choose yourself. You know, we've been conditioned to not choose ourselves. We've been conditioned to play by the rules that aren't in alignment with who, you know, we individually are. And we all know that the biggest fulfillment comes from, you know, living out who we truly are, being authentic. You know, when you look at the vibrational scales, the highest one is authenticity. So you showing up authentically is also the biggest gift you can give to other people. And the third point, and this is very often forgotten, is the fact that we have to embrace our uniqueness. You choosing you, me choosing me, isn't something that looks normal. 
if an ISTJ chooses themselves, nobody's going to care. This is what our world is currently made out of. This is what most people are. An INFJ choosing themselves is by definition not what people want you to be because it's foreign. But just because it's foreign, that doesn't mean that this isn't the transformational energy our world needs. It's exactly what we need. And so I really encourage you to start falling in love with who you are, looking at attributes and qualities about you that you like. So for me, I love the fact that I'm a fighter. I love the fact that I am a spiritual warrior in so many ways and I've gone through hell and back and I've made it here. And you know, this is something nobody can take away from me. I watched this talk many, many years ago, probably 10 years ago, and it was um, about like this woman, Nayet or something. I mess up her name. But the point was she like swam from Cuba to Florida uh, in her 60s, <clears throat> and she's tried it four times before, and it's like this heroic story. I don't know, there's like, um, there was a movie last year with uh, Annette Benning. But you know, at some point she said, at the end of the day, the thing that nobody can take away from me is that I made that happen. I showed up. I am that brave person. I have chosen that path. I have made this happen. And until my last breath, I will be that person. And I will know this to my core. And this is something nobody can take away from me. And I'm here to tell you, you choosing you is something that you'll never, ever regret. And so I wish this upon all of you. No matter how hard it may seem in this moment, it's a feeling that is undescribable. It's a feeling of meaning and purpose and just deep love for oneself. So I wanted to do this video a bit longer, but as you see, I am getting a little emotional. Um, it's a good emotion. I'm sorry I, uh, I confront you with like deep stuff. I hope you can carry this for me and... Um, give me the space for it, but you can do this. I know you can. And I wish every one of you can experience this the way I've experienced this. So in order to have like a comedic uh, break, you know how it is in movies like, oh, okay, there's like, it's getting too sad. So, um, you know, boot camp. you know, you can join by tomorrow. Um, this is going to be amazing, yay. Uh, no, you know, I, I really care about the transformation we do there, so. Um, yeah, whoever wants to join us, I welcome you. And um, I can't wait to see many of you uh, starting tomorrow. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for listening. Bye.